We're live right now, LeGarrette, so that's why I'm talking to you while I'm talking down the line. And you got one of the Super Bowl rings on. Holy crap. Chris? How big is this thing? Joining us? This Super Bowl ring. I think I'm on the right side. Right? Yeah, you're good, LeGarrette. Here we go. Put that right on there. LeGarrette Blunt. Which Super Bowl ring is that, LeGarrette? The first one. Super Bowl, Super Bowl 49. Oh, man. You know, we, we talked about you a ton back in Pittsburgh this year. Do you know why? Why was that? Because Melvin Ingram said, I'm ready for a new team, and he left the Steelers midseason to go to the Chiefs, and he was almost in this game, right? Yeah. Which is very similar to the path you took midseason, Steelers to Patriots. Yeah. Am I right? You're right. You're right. Um, I didn't even know that. I didn't. Melvin because that's happened a few times with the Steelers. You left midseason. James Harrison did that, ended up playing in a Super Bowl with the Patriots. Yeah. They lost to Philly. You guys, yeah, yeah. same deal. And now Melvin Ingram this season. So walk us through that. You're with a team to start a year. How do you go through, I think this is not, as a veteran player, this is not the right situation for me, LeGarrette Blunt. Um, so me personally, um, I think that I talked and communicated with the people there and um, kind of expressed my feelings and thoughts and how I, how I felt like I should be used and how I felt like my role should be taken um, and what role I should be in when I, before I signed with them. Um, and what were they telling you at the time? Uh, they were just saying, you know, obviously we want you to be here. Um, um, we want you and Le'Veon to be the, the next one-two punch, the next one-two duo. We want you guys to, you know, um, split carries and, you know, this, that, and the other. And obviously they don't give you a number of split carries, but um, I wasn't going in there expecting, not, expecting to go into any games with less than, you know, 10, 15 carries. Right. Um, I'm playing well. I just came off of a Super Bowl win. Like, I'm, I'm a good back, you know. Um, and I felt like uh, when I came there, they it started off that way a little bit, and then it kind of started trending backwards to where I would probably have five carries. Then I would have two carries, you know. Then eventually, you know, one game I didn't have any carries. Um, that Indianapolis Colts game, I didn't have any carries. Um, more power to Le'Veon because I understand he was – playing really, really well. Right. You know what I'm saying? But 35 or 40 or however many, 40-plus, whatever carries that he had, that's just – that's uncalled for when you got another running back that that can take 15 of those carries, that could take 12 of those carries and still be just as productive. And Tomlin just did that with Najee Harris in his rookie year. He led the yeah. league in touches, man. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't even know who the backup is. Either do we because they know? didn't have a good one. Right. With Garrett, there was nobody. Right. But, see, with me, they did, though. You Heck, know, yeah. They, they did. They had a really good one. And um, I talked to them, and I told them, like, man, I don't understand. You know, I don't know how this even happened. And, you know, they was like, well, he was playing good. He was hot, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, well, all in all, you know, I feel like I've done way too much in this league to feel like a full-time reliever. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. okay, you only play whenever this guy gets tired. Like no, I've been I'm, I've played way too good in this league for me to be that kind of back. Like I need to be in a part of the game plan, and that's how I felt, and that's how they made me feel mm -hmm. until up to that point. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, bro, this ain't gonna work. You know, this isn't gonna work out for me. This isn't gonna work out for y'all. So yeah, you know, what do we do from here? And obviously, you know, ultimately they released me, and then you know I went to New England and. And the rest is history, the rest as they is say. History, yeah. <laughs> Look, Garrett, when we're on the outside and we see that situation happen, we I think fans, media, people who, who don't get to be in that locker room or who aren't privy to those conversations you're having, even the negative ones, assume that it is very much personal, right, between you and the head coach or position coach or anybody. How much of it is personal versus professional when you're having some of those difficult conversations, those frustrated conversations about your role? Um, I would say that it's it's more personal because um, money is involved. You know, um, when it comes down to it, money is involved. And, you know, just like coaches have to win win games for incentives of their contract, um, we have to get yards, or we have to get touchdowns, or we have to get this, or we have to get that. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's in, and a lot of these things, you know, a lot of these guys know the incentives that you have to reach. A lot of these contracts do have – big incentives you know what I'm saying and if we're being 100% real and honest bro those incentives do play a factor in what you're allowed and not allowed to do in games you know for instance if the game is on the line you know and you need 50, you know 
a, a 10 yard carry, you know, obviously you're not going to get that, you know, um, you know, whereas in if you the Buccaneers, you know, and obviously you're going to the playoffs and you have a guy that needs two catches for 20 yards, you know, to become, you know, get a million dollars, you know, I've seen that not happen. Yeah. You know, I've seen people not let that happen. Take them out the game. Oh, bro, we're going to save you for, you know, the playoffs rather than, you know, go out there and throw this guy a freaking screen pass. Right. Or go and throw this guy whatever a couple completions for 20 yards and then get out because you seen you seen Tom Brady just do that for Gronk, you know what I'm saying? So is this a common thing, Legarrette, where you get misled, where a coach makes a promise in the spring, and then once the season starts, it's a totally different thing? Is that widespread? Because a lot of people are saying that about Tomlin right now, and is that just something that's unique to him, Legarrette? So I'm gonna I'm just say so there was no problem between me and Mike. Okay, good. I like I like Mike. I like Mike Tomlin. The problem was the offensive coordinator, mm -hmm. um, not being, not calling the plays that I would be in, you know. Um, not and Todd has a prickly reputation. You're not telling us something we don't already know. Right. He he's not calling the plays, and, and and then coming to me during the weekend. I'm saying, hey, Todd, bro, like, what's going on? Like, why am I not getting the ball? And you know, the response to be, you know, for him to not be combative, for him to not, you know, us to go back and forth. His response was always. Oh yeah, man. We got to get the ball to you. We'll do more and more to get you the ball. We're gonna get it to you. Da da da. And you know, obviously, I'm gonna believe that. You know, because it's my offense coordinator, so I'm gonna trust what he's saying. And 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 then. And, and then the it, Tennessee game, you said the heck with this. Yeah. I'm out of here. Yeah. I'm like, bro, that was the Colts game. Okay. And I'm like, bro, are you kidding me? It's like, are you kidding me? This is this. I've never had a coach not give me the ball once. You know what I'm saying? After. After me having that 1,000 yard season, my rookie year, every team that I've been a part of, I've always carried the ball in the games. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's seven, ten, whatever, I'm getting the ball, and there's not no carry games for me. And and that was that was that was odd for me, man. That was that was tough for me, you know. And Mike Tomlin knew it was tough for me, and he knew that it was it wasn't, you know. I felt like it wasn't fair. Um, I felt like I had done done too much for the game and for myself for it for it to be like this. Legarrett, one of these things, you know, like web, a sports website, The Athletic, they ran a poll, I guess, an anonymous poll of players. And so it's interesting that you said you didn't have an issue with Mike, that you like Mike, and it sounds like you got along with him person to person. More players uh, surveyed than it for than any other coach said they'd want to play for Mike Tomlin. Was that is that a sentiment that is pretty common around the league? Do guys really want to come yeah. here and play for him? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I I I was I was juiced when I got a chance to come play to Pittsburgh because I mm. love Mike Tomlin, man. I really do. Like I'm a huge fan of his, um, and how successful he is, how he runs his program. Like I I love Mike T. So there's no knock. There'll ever there'll never be a knock. Like anytime you hear any kind of knock, if this if it's from me about Mike T, then it's it's not. It's probably not the truth. You're talking about the guy that's coaching the USFL now and not the Steelers head coach. <laughs> um. <laughs> Last one, and we're going to ask you why you're here with your big Super Bowl ring, well, but you have many. By the way, you're on such a short list mm -hmm. with Emmett Smith and Franco Harris and running backs that have been the lead dog for Super Bowl champions, man. Um, there was a conspiracy theory that this is your chance to clear up because people in Pittsburgh were saying when he said the heck with this, he's already got a deal done with the Patriots. He already knows <laughs> he can go back there. So the statute of limitations are up. You're not going to get fined now. They're not going to take away your Super Bowl rings. Did you know that you could go back to the Patriots, LeGarrette Blunt? I did not know I could go back to I mean, I knew that it was a possibility because I was going to be obviously available. Uh, available. But um, I didn't – I like, we didn't coordinate it or anything like okay. that. Like, I didn't talk to anybody. Bill was so Bill, Bill didn't call you up and go, Hi, LeGarrette, I'd love to have you back in nah, New England. He did, he did not. He did, did. But uh, – <laughs> but I knew that that was a high possibility. I knew that it was a high chance. I knew that the back that they had, um, I think it was Jonas at the time. Oh, he Jonas got it. Gray. Whoop. I think he, he had just rushed for 200 yards maybe the week before. And uh, so I knew when they picked me up, I was just like, man, they, it's, it, I'm going to have to split time with Jonas, which is cool because Jonas is a pretty good running back. I, you know what I'm saying? He's all right. Jonas um, Gray. Yeah, yeah. He's an all right running back. Um, but then he um, got cut a couple of weeks later. Yeah, well, he he didn't get cut. He just got benched, so he mm. wasn't dressing for the games and stuff. And I ended up being the, I got picked up on Wednesday or Thursday, and I ended up starting on Sunday. Jeez. 
Uh, tell us why you're here, Lagarde. It says LG's feel good. How you feeling, good man? Tell us. I feel great, man. I feel um, so. LG's feel good is my company. Um, oh, congratulations on all your success, I man. That's awesome, it, man. Uh, it's my, it's my, it's my company. It's 100% organic, 100% THC free, um, all natural. It's uh, pain patches, salve, rollerball. I have sleep gummies, and I have anxiety drops. Um, those are the products that I have in the company. Um, all beneficial to not just professional athletes, but everyone. I need the anxiety drops for Steelers games. I, I thought you were going to say you needed them after dealing with me five days a week, Pony. <laughs> that too. Watching that Steelers offense, I need those anxiety <laughs> drops. I got you. I got you. So that, yeah, those drops will. Those drops will. They'll, they'll have. They'll have you watching the game, even though the, even though the Steelers are losing twenty to six. You know, oh. you'll still be watching the game calm. Can you get you know some, but so, Garrett? So, can you make some creativity games. drops for their offense? Can you make some some stuff that's going to gin up some good I, plays I can here? I go out there and call the plays for them. I can do that for sure. I, I know I can do that. Yeah, man. Um, but um, yeah, man. That's I, I, I yeah. I appreciate you guys even plugging this. Um, what's the website? How do people it's, get it's, them? The the website is lgsfeelgood.com. Cool. That's where you find all of all of the products, um, and it'll give you even more information on it. Um, then what I'm giving you, I'm kind of brief with it, but it'll, it'll give you even more in, information on it. Um, you find it at lgsfeelgood.com. That's where you find the product. Well, Garrett, you're a cool guy, man. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Garrett. Thank you so much. Who's winning yes, the Super Bowl? The Rams. There you go. Well, Garrett Blunt. Watch out for Odell Beckham.